My friends, on April 1st, 2018, I recounted the story of Cradle Speed Lore, where I described how 20 years of strategy, discoveries, and development all led up to the ability to beat the stage in 34 seconds on all three difficulties. Every single improvement, optimization, and new understanding of the game were carefully examined and blended together in a perfect symphony of speedrunning that led to 34 second runs on Agent in the year 2005 and on the more challenging Secret and Double Agent in the year 2015. And while the idea of a theoretical 33 second run was entertained at the end of the Speedler episode, it was just that, theoretical. And if we look at the GoldenEye rankings just two weeks ago, we'd see that nothing had changed. But today, the rankings look like this. So what the heck happened that turned Cradle 33s from a pipe dream into an overnight reality? So, Wednesday, September the 5th was a pretty normal day in the speedrunning world. And as normal days go, once evening falls, there are often a bunch of streams going and lively discussion in the community Discord channel. And like many nights before that one, some of the Discord discussion involved theory crafting strategies in the GoldenEye speed game, which, if you're familiar with theory crafting at all, usually leads nowhere beyond some healthy brain exercise and thought experiments. While that night's topic of discussion was indeed the Cradle stage, David Clemens in particular seemed intent on figuring out a legitimate path to get 33 seconds on the stage. Clem shared the tool-assisted speedrun done in 2010 by Henrik Weister Norgren as a possible source of inspiration, where he notes that Trevelyan's speed in this specific run, which is a random element, is pretty slow, and suspects that a more modern TAS could perhaps push something like 32 seconds. Flickr form, and correctly I'd say, points out that the method in which Henrik blew up the console, Objective A, is not feasible as quickly on console, as it's commonly known the Nintendo 64 emulates inaccurately, and you'd never have low enough lag to destroy the console with those shots so quickly. Clem points out though that you could do it a little slower than TAS still, and it would still have a chance at 33 because he thinks the Trevelyan speed was really that notably slow on this TAS run. Then I catch wind of the conversation and just am dumbfounded by how much time is obviously saved by staying to the right of the large engine in what we call the Trev Hut. You see, if there's one thing that's remained consistent across the last 20 years, it's that Every strategy that was used at a time to get the world records on Cradle involved going to the left of the large engine and blowing up the Objective A console ourselves on the way out of the room to finish the mission. But something just clicked that night. Why the heck are we not trying to go to the right? Yeah, we don't know exactly how we'll be able to destroy the Objective A console from over there yet, but let's play around with it and see what we can come up with. That same night, the upstart and now top 25 ranked player, Irie Butler, got this run. Come on, there has to be a 33 tail. Yes, dude! The Trev kill, Objective B, went as normal blowing up the drone and shooting Trevelyan on the same frame, he takes damage from the drone explosion. Irie then turns, attempts the TAS-style console, but misses, runs to the end, and boom, a 33-second failed run. If only he had hit five bullets on the console, we would have seen the untied world record. Carl Jobs would get a similar 33-second run, killing Trevelyan but failing the console. No! And then David Clemens got this run. Ooh, 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 ooh. Dude, did you guys see that? Did you guys see that f***ing console? Oh my god, that was so quick. So Clemens showed us that the TAS style console was indeed doable on, well, console. Difficult, yes, but doable. 
But not long after, Irie Butler got this run. He killed Trevelyan, attempted to shoot the console, missed. However, Objective A still completed as he was running towards the end of the stage. What this revealed to us was that sometimes, and it would later be determined to be about 30% of the time, Trevelyan will drop a grenade as he dies. This grenade can land in many different places in that hut, but if it lands in this small outlined area, which seems to happen somewhere around 10 to 25% of the time when he drops a grenade, it will also destroy the Objective A console. So basically this strategy became a spray and pray method of kill Trevelyan with a drone explosion and just run to the end, hoping that Trev drops a grenade close enough to the Objective A console to destroy it. Yeah, it makes the level a little more luck-based, but as I always point out, this sort of luck often ends up rewarding consistency and skill rather than gifting an unmatchable record to less skilled players. And the real result of this all is that pretty much anyone who had the skill to get 34 seconds the old way, which was a lot of people, can now get 33 seconds. So this initiated a rare gold rush in Goldeneye. A new strategy being discovered, resulting in a race to get the untied world records, where people who might not usually be capable of getting untieds are absolutely in the mix to do so. And in this case, three untieds were up for grabs on the three difficulties of Cradle. Dozens of streams went live, all with the hopes of getting the run that would go down in Goldeneye history for the ages. On Friday, September 7, it felt like Carl and Clemens streamed all through the day and night, two titans battling for the untied. So you can imagine, it was quite the shock when in the stream of 26th place ranked Timmy Johansson, this happened. You can really see Timmy go through the mix of emotions from shock, elation, disbelief, and he'd leave his stream on for about another two hours, just bathing in the aftermath of a historic GoldenEye untied world record, as we've all done. To remind you, Cradle Agent 34 was set by Brian Bosshart on December 19, 2005, remained untied for nearly two years, would eventually be tied by 61 others, and stood as the record for 4,637 days, just shy of 13 years. Timmy was mostly thrilled to have etched his name forever in GoldenEye history, a game he's played a lot and come to care deeply about. He knew the Untied wouldn't last long, but he took solace in the fact that forever, he will have been the first man to beat Cradle in 33 seconds. And last long it did not. Only a few hours later, both David Clemens and Irie Butler tied the 33 on Agent, which left me wondering, why didn't those guys play Secret or Double Agent to get those untieds first instead? Agent is a fair bit easier than the other two difficulties. The guards aren't as accurate and take less damage to kill, and your auto-aim is stronger, but Trevelyan's kill works exactly the same. In any case, this just prolonged the battle for the remaining Untieds. The following day, we were all shocked to see an old familiar name. Wouter Jansen not only started up his stream, but got a completion using the new strategy in 34 seconds. His first personal or world record since October 2014. So naturally, many were cheering for the old legend of the game, the guy who achieved more records than anyone else in GoldenEye history to nail one of the Untieds. 
But of course, as usually happens in speedrunning sport or anywhere in life, the coolest story is the one that rarely ends up happening. September 8th turned into 9th. By now, Carl and Wotus had tied Agent 33, but the other difficulties didn't want to give. However, as the night of the 10th became the 11th, we saw two remarkable speedruns. Yeah, and the sad thing is I've actually had, like, decent trap kill consistency today. It's just I haven't gotten a grenade that I'll actually do anything. When you actually have good trap kill consistency and you're still on good grenade, it's pretty fucking cool. I think it was a slow trap. I think it's 34. Oh my god! Yes! Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! I'm a fing legend. I'm the cradle legend, dude. I am the fing cradle legend. Untied world record. Fuck yes. That's right. Redemption. Redemption, dude. Redemption, dude. Cradle agent, secret, and double O agent. All done in 33 seconds. Three seconds stripped from Goldeneye's total time and the end of a rare gold rush in the speed game. Interestingly, the last gold rush was also on Cradle in October 2015, when the drone explosion Trev kill was first discovered and understood. The world record was of course already 34 on Agent, but it would be David Clemens and Dan Swiss Parker who would get the 34s on Secret and Double O Agent that time around. Revealing Clemens' absolute mastery and poise when it comes to getting these clutch untieds. The skill needed for Cradle 33 isn't that high. Pretty much anyone in the top 50 or 100 could have been capable of getting the untied. Yet Clemens, in all time legend, beat out the rest of the competition in both these cases. It is absurd to think about just how many possible new strategies are still out there after 20 years waiting to be discovered to send tons of speedrunners into a frenzy, hoping to strike gold. And what's ridiculous about this Cradle strategy in particular is that the Dark License to Kill players, Goldeneye's most extreme mode, have known about Trevelyan being able to drop a grenade which takes out the console for years. We just never put the pieces together to realize this could happen on a normal mode world record pace run and skip destroying the console ourselves. Even more absurd is that it is a statistical certainty that at least some of these 64 total 34s on Secret or Double O Agent using the previous strategy would have had Trev kill grenade drops that would have blown the Objective A console and would have been 33s had the runner skipped destroying it himself and just run to the end instead. But we didn't because we never imagined in our wildest dreams such a thing would work. Looking back, I don't think we were stupid not to think of this before. Killing Trevelyan and just hoping he drops a grenade in the perfect spot to destroy the console. It's a lol-worthy strategy on paper. 
But isn't that the beauty of speedrunning? As of writing this video, seven people now have tied the 33 on Agent, with Secret and Double Agent still being untied. More people will tie all of these records in the coming days and weeks, but it will slow down eventually. One last note is that if Luke Sklars plays and ties these 33s, he will pass the inactive perfect ace Rayan Isran to retake GoldenEye Champion. In any case, there is a ton going on in GoldenEye right now, so I definitely recommend checking out the GoldenEye game page on Twitch to follow along with some of the hot action. And who knows, maybe the next massive strategy innovation and gold rush for the next Untied World Records will be right around the corner. So there you have it. That's what's been happening on Cradle lately, if you've been wondering why and how the World Records have been falling lately. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, definitely subscribe for more remarkable speedrunning history, analysis, and content. Like this video to reserve your place in the next GoldenEye Gold Rush whenever that ends up happening. In the meantime, stay true, and I'll see you in the next stream or video.